Welcome back everybody to Make Share Daily where you go to get your daily builds and today is FLL Friday and what we have today is we're going to talk about the color center. So we have our little color ball or little color wheel and we're going to show you how to program using the color center to control your EV3 robot. So to learn about how the color sensor works, let's look at the bottom right hand corner of the EV3 Home Edition uh, program that comes with, that you can download off the website. So this right here, for number one, we have the color sensor. So that means that the port for the EV3, number one, goes, is cabled to the color sensor. You can see here the touch sensor is uh, wired to port three and the infrared and proximity is wired to port four. So these are the sensors going into the EV3 and you actually can get readings from the EV3 itself directly over to the computer. So when I hit the trigger, you can see that it changes from zero to one. So that is changing the state. Now, the question is, when we look at the color sensor, what will it do? So let's take a look. So if we look at white on the color wheel, it shows a six. If I switch it to black, it shows a one. If I go over to yellow, it shows a four. If I switch it to green, that's a little darker than yellow and it's now a three. And if I go to red, that's a five. And blue is a two. So depending on what color it is, results in a different number for the color center. So based on white and black, which was six or zero, we're now going to use those to show and demonstrate the program can be run based on the trigger of the color center, right? So let's take a look. So what we wanna do is bring in a loop. And then here, instead of unlimited, we're gonna say color center, color. So if it is black, right? So that's black, which is one. and I deselect red. So now I'm gonna bring in this move command, okay? And it doesn't really matter, it's just gonna show us whether or not it's taking the command or not. And it's going to rotate for one rotation. So this is now set for one. So what it's going to do is it's going to stop if it sees black. And otherwise, it's gonna keep looping and keep operating one rotation, one rotation, one rotation, one rotation, until it sees black on the color sensor. So right now it's on yellow, so it's gonna operate. So it's, you can hear it, one, one rotation, one rotation, one rotation. If I switch over to white, it's got a sensor of six. If I switch over to red, it's now five. If I go to green, for green, for whatever reason, it's now showing one. So it thinks that it sees black. For some reason, green is showing up one to three, and then black is showing up one. So it depends. The, the sensor isn't perfect, and it sometimes doesn't operate 100%. However, the difference between white, which is six, and one, which is black, is pretty black and white, meaning it is a far distinction between those two. When you get into the different colors like green and blue and yellow, it's not 100%. You know, it, should, it jumps between one and three for your green. So if you're trying to get one aspect out of this, is it's not the most, uh, it's not the most uh, accurate. However, if you're trying to determine the difference between a white table and a black line, this color sensor is perfect for that. So let's now run another program just to show you an idea of what you can do with this EV3. 
So if you want to know what the number color is, you can use the ball and you can show the sensor the that color and then it will show up the number in the bottom right hand corner down here. Or you can actually go up here and select the color that you want it to trigger the change in state. And so you could use black, green, yellow, red, whatever it is. So in our case, we're gonna keep it as black. And this Technic strip is gonna represent a line on the Technic board, okay? So that is what's going to trigger this robot to change state. So we're gonna tell it to move forward one rotation continually until it sees the black line. Then we're going to add a tank move. We'll add this tank move and then we'll make it back up. So we're gonna back it up and back it up a little bit more on that side so it turns as it backs up and then it's gonna stop. So it's only gonna do that for one rotation so basically the way that this program works is it's going to move forward until it hits that line. When it hits that line, it's going to back up. Okay. So we're going to put the robot back here. We're going to hit the go command. We're going to hold the line where it is. And that's what it happened. So it kept moving forward continually through the loop until it sees the black line. Once it sees that black line, it's going to move backwards and a little bit to the right. What do you think of that? Pretty good. In SumoBot and in FLL, you use the black to white transition to make a change in the code. And whether or not you're going forward or backwards depends on what color the line sensor is seeing. So this color sensor can be utilized in many different ways to make sure that you're staying within the ring or walking along a path. So a different way to use this color sensor is through the different functions that the color sensor has. So not just color, black, white, blue, red, and, and taking action based on the color. You can use reflective light intensity. So if you're just using white and black, um, then you can use the reflective light intensity. So you click on light, reflective light intensity. And as you see, when we're looking at the white board, the color reflectivity is in the 60s. When I put the black on underneath that sensor, it drops down all the way to under 10. That's all about the light intensity that's reflecting on the table itself. So in this case, what we do is instead of having color, you have reflective light intensity and you can select the level. So in this case, we're gonna have 50 which is less than the 60. We're gonna say that the color sensor or the light intensity sensor has to show greater than the 50. So if it's greater than 50 and stays greater than 50, it's gonna continually loop. It's gonna continually go forward. Once it drops below 50, it will send a signal to this and it will start going in reverse again. So let's hit the play button. Well, so it went forward. It didn't stop itself, um, but it went forward until it triggered and then went backwards. So let's, let's show that again. So as soon as it goes over that black line, it backs up, right? After the rotation is done. After the completion of the rotation that's inside the loop. So you can make this loop, you can make this, um, go command shorter and sh shorter until it gets more of a feedback and it has shorter feedback loops to make sure that once it hits that sensor it stops and then goes backwards in this case it's going pa it sees the line but it continues with that forward motion until it stops then it goes backwards over that line so it looks a little weird um, especially considering this is a three-dimensional line but I think you get the idea. You want it to recognize the line, then once it's done with that loop command, it's going to go outside the loop and go in the reverse command. So that is a way to use the line as a backup indicator or as a location indicator. 
you could have it instead of go backwards you can have it stop once it hits the line you can make it turn right so if you have an FLL board that has a line way out here you could run all the way to that line as soon as it hits that line it does a 90 degree turn and moves in that direction and starts a new set of commands so that's how to use the color sensor and the light intensity sensor now the other one is the ambient light sensor but it's very similar to the reflective light intensity level so i would use the reflective light uh, before i'd use the last one now that's how you can use the light sensor for detecting which color and giving it a different command based off of what color it is on the color wheel and what color you show it or you can use the light intensity sensor to determine whether or not you're transitioning between white and black and then make a command based off of you hitting that line so those are two things that you can do with this light intensity sensor and again next episode we're going to talk about line writing which is actually a very difficult program to create but once you figure out the basics of um, operating the line sensor the line writing is a lot easier so we'll tackle line writing in the next episode if you like this video give us a thumbs up if you think that there's other ways to use the color sensor leave a comment down below we'd love to hear about how you use the color sensor and if you like this EV3 programming and you, you want to see more, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell down below and you'll get more updates on our FLL Fridays. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you next time. See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>